Hello everybody, I'm Jeff, I'm a photographer, and I also give motorcycle tours in Colombia, and I thought I'd show you guys how to edit a photo that I took with an iPhone. So check this out, here's the original picture, you can see it's cut off at the top right there, and the sky is kind of blown out, it's way overexposed, there's no detail in there, Jack is too dark, no detail in this, so let's, let's edit it. So, first thing we'll do, we'll go to the canvas size. We'll increase the height of it by about, I don't know, a little bit. Like that. So now we're working with this. You can see now we got a lot more sky to work with. Then I'll go over here. I'll go to the polygonal lasso tool. Cut this out. Check this out little trick cut all that out so now I got that selected then what we'll do we'll soften that selection by modifying it feathering it feather it by maybe 20 pixels copy which is command C on the Mac command V to paste it now we can drag it around you can see the edges are smooth they're not smooth they're feathered they're softer edges now let's go over here Let's put in a little mountain top. Oh, that looks nice. Kind of zoom in there to uh, get it lined up pretty good. So that looks good to me. So we got that. This area is a little messed up. So we'll just paste in another copy. Command T to transform it. Go over here. Kind of turn it a little bit. Zoom in. Move it over a little bit. Yep, that should do it. That looks good. So now we can zoom out. And let's see, let's make it a little bit bigger like this. Oh, my battery's going dead. Let's try. Let's try that for now. And then we'll clean that up here in one minute. Let me plug in the computer. It's plugged in. So, we got this going on. Now, what we'll do, we can just flatten the layers. Bloop. And then we'll zoom in. And let's see, there's a little bit of uh, variation between the brightness right there. I'll hit J. That will get me the spot healing brush. Right? Maybe we can go in there and see how this, how that works. Hey, that took care of it. I like the uh, spot healing brush for the content to wear. It kind of does everything for you automatically. Let's see what we can do here. Will that, will that always be messed up? Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, it looks, it looks fairly good. Let's try this. Hit S. Now I'll do the clone stamp tool. Use the brackets that will make the brush smaller and hold option. We'll pull from here. No, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good either. Whatever can we do? Let's try this. I'll just take from. I'll try the spot healing brush again. Hmm. What I can do actually, let's make a lasso around this. Loop. Like that. We'll copy it, paste it, transform it with Command T. Let's see what we can do to make that transition be smoother. You know, honestly, it really doesn't even matter because we're gonna do some other stuff, and then it will come out. It'll come out better here in a little bit. So now check this out. We've got no sky there, right? It's all blown out. And his jacket's still dark and all that stuff. So even though this is a JPEG, not a RAW, we'll just go in here, camera raw filter, and we'll just edit it like a RAW. What we'll do, we'll go in here, we'll bump up those shadows all the way, right? A JPEG doesn't have a lot of dynamic range or anything like that. So you can just bump up the shadows all the way and it'll, it'll probably be okay. 
drop the highlights down a little bit. I'm looking at the mountain just to get some, I don't, know, don't want too bright. Just drop it down. And then you can see we, we brought the jacket back up. Now you can see lots of detail in the jacket. It's increased the exposure a little bit on everything because brighter photos always look nice. We'll put it to about half a uh, half a stop of exposure. That's looking good. Then we'll do some clarity adjustment, right? That's a mid-range contrast adjustment. Just a little bit. The main reason I do that is just because I like messing around with all the sliders. You can see the, the difference that it makes in there. Just a little bit. And then there's a little vibrance, which basically it even plus five. It does nothing by just like messing with the sliders. And let's see, that looks pretty good to me for now. So we'll do this. We'll say OK. Well, so now watch this. Let's go here. We'll say filter Skyloom software. We'll do Luminar 4. And this will replace the sky. And let's let her load up. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Cool. So it loaded up there. Now check this out. Go to the little creative palette. We'll do a sky selection. Check it out. Blue sky one. Blop. Does that look cool? It throws it back there and it also relights the scene and it makes the foreground blend with the sky and all that stuff. I found out like blue sky one and blue sky two usually look the most natural. Yeah. Blue Sky 3 looks cool. That could do it too, but I like all the clouds. 5, 6, yeah, so so. Dramatic sunset, no. What's the galaxy one look like? Wow. Oh. What's that? Whoa. Look at the stars. Starry night, cool. But what we'll do, we'll just go with, let's say, blue sky numero dos. Blue sky number two. And this, I took this photo. I live in Medellin, Colombia. And uh, I took this photo of Medellin. And the sky naturally looks that way almost like every day. So it's not too far from reality. But let's do that. That looks pretty cool. Let's hit apply. And I'll apply it. We'll bake it into the JPEG, as they say. And that looks cool. Now let's hit Command L. We'll check the levels. Look at the histogram. There's a little bit of the histogram not being used there, not being used there. Let's take the black point, drag it in. Let's take the white point, drag it in. Now grab onto the histogram. Check this out. Bloop, 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 bloop. Looks a little bit better. And guess what? We can pretty much leave it there. Then what I'll do, let's hit layer, and we'll hit flatten image, just to make sure it's good, and then check this out. Sometimes if you take a picture with your iPhone or something like that, it's not always the right color profile. So just go to convert to profile, right? Profile right now is display P3. Let's go and change that to the working, art, just an RGB or sRGB color profile. A lot of people say to do the pro photo or Adobe RGB. If you accidentally put your photos in the pro photo color file, color profile and you leave them that way, um, when you go to publish them on the internet, they're going to look all messed up. The colors will be pretty screwed up. Uh, got a Wix email. Bloop. So what we do, just leave them in RGB like that. It'll be good. Say OK. And then we got it. And that is how you go and you edit a photo from basically this and you go all the way down to that and that's it hope y'all like it see y'all later bye now